Hi guys, in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to download digital elevation data absolutely for free from NASA Earth Data Search Tool. To log into NASA Earth Data Search Tool, all you have to do is just head over to your internet browser and you can do a quick search for NASA Earth Data. This is the link that you're supposed to head over to. It's www.earthdata.nasa.gov. And from here, you can head over to Data tab and open Earth Data Search. And you'll be presented with this portal from which you can download actually quite a number of different data types. But uh, it's just going to be beyond the scope of this tutorial to explore, well, each and every uh, data type. So we're just going to restrict ourselves to just uh, elevation data for the purpose of this tutorial. So before we get started, the first thing that you need to do is you have to have an account with uh, NASA Earth Data. So that you can sort out by heading over to Earth Data Login. And from here, if you happen to have an account, you can just go ahead and put in your username and password and, and you'll be ready to go. However, if you've never used this, all you have to do is just go through a quick registration process and uh, you'll be set to go uh, in no time. So you can just head over to register from here and just put in your details, your email address and a number of different uh, information that, you're, that they're looking for uh, in order to get you registered. And once that's done, you can head back to, well, the main portal. And in my case, I have already uh, gone through that registration process, which didn't even take more than five minutes. And uh, I have gotten a username and a password. So I'm just going to enter those and log into the system. And once you log in, your name should appear uh, right around here. And the next thing that you can do is you can literally zoom into the area of interest, uh, the area that you're looking to download this elevation data for. So in my case, that's going to be right around here, the region covering this Mont Blanc area. So this is my area of interest. You can actually uh, be a bit more specific when it comes to the area uh, using a number of different methods. For example, if you'd like to draw a rectangle and specify that, you could actually go with this tool right around here. And uh, you could just click and drag and say that, okay, you're looking to download elevation data for this part. And as soon as you do that, you can see that it manages to capture the coordinates to register the boundaries of your specified area of interest. But if you don't want to use a rectangle, you could even use something like a polygon. So for example, if you click on this polygon tool and what you can do is you can just basically start drawing a polygon like this and if you click over the first point it's going to close the polygon and accordingly it's going to create an area of interest like that as well so let's just say that uh, I would like to maybe specify my area of interest using this polygon all right so the next thing is going actually into the data types and browsing through now that process might be a bit overwhelming just because of the fact that there's a lot going on. For example, if you want to search by instrument, then you can see quite a lot of uh, instruments. Or let's say if you want to go by organization, and if you scroll down, you will find something called Shuttle Radar Topography Mission. Now, that's what SRTM stands for. So if, you, if you're looking for SRTM data, this is the easiest way to get there. There are actually other ways of getting there as well. But I would say that uh, you can go to organizations and you can go to shuttle radar topography mission like this and then just uh, add a tick over here. And beyond that, you can actually do further specifications as well. For example, let's say if you want to narrow it down to a specific data format, uh, you can see what sort of data formats are available. Uh, let's say in my case, I would like to download this in this in uh, HGD, HGT format. I could select that as well. So after you do all of your selections uh, in this main panel, then what you can do is you can actually expand this panel and have a look for yourself what's actually available. So as you can see, it narrowed the search down to four different, uh, let's say, data sets. And uh, you might have to carefully inspect just to understand what the difference between these different data, data sets are. So you can see that this is SRTM global one arc second uh, data set and this is three arc second. So, so the resolution of this is actually going to be three times higher. Well, higher in the sense that the pixel size is going to be three times higher than this one. 
I think I'm just going to go with this NASA Shuttle Radar Topography Mission Global 1 arc second. So I can click over here. And when I do that, it's going to take some time and it's going to basically place all the available tiles that are covering my area of interest. And as you can see, you can't really cover my entire area of interest using just one tile. And a tile is basically an individual piece of data set that they have. So if you want elevation data to cover this entire region, that means I would have to actually download all of these, how many, how many tiles, three, six, 10 separate tiles. So all of that you can actually, you can download all 10 at once simply by clicking over here, which might take a considerable amount of time depending on the size of uh, these individual tiles. But just for demonstration purposes, I'm just going to go ahead and maybe download, let's say these two tiles. So you can see that as I move my mouse point over here, you can see the corresponding tile gets highlighted. So I'm just going to click on the download single granule data button once. And we can say, well, download files. And after that, basically you can navigate into the folder that you would like to save your files in. Uh, just click save and it should get downloaded into that. So it's not that heavy. You can see that it's just about 11.5 megabytes. So I could have even just download the entire thing uh, quite quickly as well, but that's fine. I'm just going to download well, this is one that I just downloaded, so I'm just going to download this tile as well, which is which should be this one, and I'm just going to save it as well. So as you can see, we downloaded two different files, and now it's the time for us to open up a GIS software like QGIS and start inspecting those files. And potentially, I'm also going to show you guys how to merge two tiles together because because typically it's a bit hard to work uh, when the tiles are separated like this. So it's always in your best interest to kind of go ahead and merge these two together with the help of the GIS tool that you're using. So if I navigate to my working folder, you can see the two files that I downloaded. Uh, I could just directly select both of them and drag it and drop it over here. And you can see those two tiles over the geographical area uh, that I was interested in. And uh, as I told you guys, it's still going to be imported as uh, two different tiles like this. So in order to merge tiles, what you can do is you can head over to raster and you can go to miscellaneous and you can select merge. You can just input uh, whatever you have over here by expanding this section and you can manually select it. So it's going to be these two tiles and uh, the output data type. Well, you could select uh, float 32 or you could select any of these data types but depending on what you select there are going to be some consequences so for example let's say if you open up one of these files and go to properties and if you head over to source well if you head over to information you could see the data type is actually int 16-bit uh, signed integer so there wouldn't really be a necessity to create a new raster with float 32 Float basically indicates that it'll carry decimal numbers, but there's no real incentive to actually going with float 32 in this case. So what you can do is you can just select in 16, which is basically matching the original data type of, uh, of these two original rasters. And after that, you can just uh, select the output location as well. So I'm just going to name this as DEM merged and you can run. And that should just take a quick second. And after that, if I go ahead and deactivate the two files or maybe completely remove those two files. Now you can see a merged seamless raster like this. And you can just go ahead and do all sorts of uh, visualization stuff or anything else that you're interested in doing to put this raster to, to some good use. So this is how actually it looks. And uh, it's SRTM data now. If I right click and go to properties and if I go to information again, you would be able to see the cell size. Well, the pixel size in here, it's in decimal degrees. So it, it's not a number that you're that you're really familiar with. But what I can suggest is that if you reproject this into a projected coordinate reference system, you'll definitely be able to get a value in meters for the pixel size 
for example, let's say if I go to raster and go to projections and if I go to reproject and if I take this raster and if I set the target CRS to be something like WGS 1984 Web Mercator Auxiliary Sphere Projected Coordinate Reference System and uh, let's just go ahead and save this to a file as well and I'm going to name this as reprojected click save and uh, right over here you'll have the reprojected DM and if you go to properties and now if you check the cell size you can see that the pixel size is approximately 33 meters well you could you could roughly say that it's about like 30 meters by 30 meters so that's SRTM data and uh, and as you can see it was very quick and easy to download SRTM data off of uh, NASA Earth Data Web Portal. Now that actually covers pretty much everything that I wanted to discuss in this tutorial. As you saw, the process was extremely easy. And if you do have any questions, just add a comment down below. So if you did enjoy this tutorial, you can show your support by hitting that like button. And I'll see you again with another tutorial soon.